Hey, it's Dr. Sebastian Gonzalez again. Stay tuned as today we're going to do a demo for other healthcare providers on how to learn how to read MSK ultrasound for shoulder and one of the most common rotator cuff tears, the supraspinatus. Today we have an interesting shoulder case that should really help demonstrate how MSK ultrasound can help out healthcare providers in diagnosing shoulder cases much easier and more accurately. This is a shot of a normal rotator cuff, a normal supraspinatus. So here we have a normal and we have an abnormal. Again, we'll shoot you the normal, we'll show you the normal, and then we'll go with the abnormal and just take a look at it. It's a very blatant difference. The history in this case was actually a fall that we suspected about three years ago when this person came in as a labral tear or a possible supraspinatus tear, at least that's how it presented. We referred the patient out for an arthrogram which actually revealed a partial thickness tear of the supraspinatus at the muscular tendon junction, also some bursitis in the subacromial or subdeltoid bursa. During that time, she was under the care of an orthopedic surgeon, to which we referred to, who then delegated some work out to a local physical therapy office, which did a really good job at the time, and the patient had nothing but good things to say. However, this year the story changed a little bit when the patient walked in, and she was complaining of tightness within the traps, the neck, and a little bit in the shoulder. Um, she was having some headaches as well, but this was a good reason to use MSK ultrasound to evaluate the shoulder, which we already knew had pathology in it from that fall three years ago. This ultrasound image shown right now is actually the same one I showed you earlier to show abnormal and normal. And you see there's actually a very large full thickness tear of the distal supraspinatus. The tendon is actually retracted from the greater tuberosity approximately about two centimeters medially. Another correlated image we like to use with evaluating the possibility of a cuff tear and making sure there's not any false positives on the uh, ultrasound anyways is a cross-sectional view of the humerus or in ultrasound you'll call this a short axis view of the biceps tendon. And we're basically cutting in half, we're going to look at the biceps tendon down the line here and you'll see it'll go within the bicepital groove covered by the transverse humeral ligament. And basically what happens is this area will become engorged in fluid, it's a very, if it's a new cuff tear or a large cuff tear. And in this case we're seeing that it's actually not, it's, it's not very big. I mean there's some fluid in there but this actually makes me think this is an older cuff tear. And, uh, and again this is a very good view to use to evaluate the possibility or raising a red flag for a possible cuff tear. When did this injury actually happen? We have no idea and we can all agree about three years ago there was a partial tear because the MRI said so or the arthrogram said so. However when this person came in this time a lot of things could have happened in that three years and we have no idea. And considering treatment, if I were to treat that area or try to rehab it and wonder why this person is not responding, I think it's pretty clear that if there's no, if there's no tendon or muscle there and it's retracted, what are we really treating? So it's a better idea just to look very early and in this case we referred it to an orthopedic, orthopedic specialist mainly to get his opinion on it and see if we can reattach or what are, the other, what are the other options. Because the last thing that I want and I think that you want as a healthcare provider in your own field is to have low patient satisfaction and low outcome and that's definitely what happened in this case for me. In case you're thinking this is something I definitely would have caught and you might be right, you might have caught it. Um, in my case, or in this case, this person actually came in with the ability to raise her arm to about here. She didn't have full range of motion, but it was not uncomfortable and she actually had, she had nothing to complain about really with it. It wasn't that bad in her opinion. So I would have missed it and I'm glad I didn't. So in the long run of things, I think MSK ultrasound is going to be coming, it's going to be coming more popular. You're going to see more patients come in with images and reports from it. So it's actually going to be very beneficial to be able to learn how to read some of the basic images. And the supraspinatus is a very easy one to start with. And the shoulder is actually a very easy one to start with. But if you have questions about where to learn it, how to learn it, and I ran into this when I started learning, it's a very hard thing to tackle when you don't know where to go because there's not a lot of resources on it. So if you do have questions, feel free to contact me. I have no problems helping people out. Hope this, guy, hope this helped you out and I will talk to you soon.